Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estruck. In this video I'm going to go through in vitro cloning of DNA or in other words PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. If you are new here then just click subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of the new videos. So I'm just going to show you this summary, which has been on all of my other recombinant DNA technologies videos. If you haven't seen those, I'll actually link the whole playlist up here so you can see the videos on all of these different subsections. But today, what we're going to be looking at is um, once the DNA fragments have been created, which you want to insert into another organism's DNA, we're going to look at how you can amplify those fragments, meaning create large numbers in vitro, which means not inside of a living thing. And that is through PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. So as I just said, the amplifying of the DNA fragments occurs after you have isolated your DNA fragment of interest. And you can either then clone these to create large quantities in vivo, which means inside of a living organism, or in vitro, which is outside of a living organism and in the lab. So in vitro, that's what we're looking at today, and that is the polymerase chain reaction, PCR. And it is done in an automated machine. So it's fully automatic. You put all of your ingredients into this machine, leave it for a set period of time, and it's all done but we need to see what's actually happening inside of that machine. So your equipment list, first of all, you need this machine and the machine, which we can see here on the right, is called a thermocycler. The reason being, the main idea behind PCR is changing of temperatures, which we'll have a look at. It's called a cycler because you allow PCR to happen multiple times over and over and over and over until you've got huge quantities of DNA. So we need our thermocycler. You also need the DNA fragment, which you want to clone. You need the enzyme DNA polymerase so that you can make new polymer chains of DNA. And we actually use what's called TAC polymerase which is a particular type of DNA polymerase, which is obtained from bacteria that live in natural hot springs. The reason for this is the DNA polymerase found in these extreme files, these bacteria that live in hot springs, has evolved to be having an optimum much, 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 much higher than the DNA polymerase that we would have. So whereas our DNA polymerase would probably denature at temperatures around 40 or 50 degrees, TAC polymerase, the optimum is actually 72 degrees C and it won't denature until you reach temperatures over 100 degrees C. And we'll come to why that's important later. You also need to add primers and a primer is a short sequence of single stranded DNA. And you would deliberately create primers which are complementary to the start and end of the DNA fragment sequence that you are cloning. In addition to that, you need to add lots of DNA nucleotides. So those are the equipment, those are the things that you would need to go in the machine and the machine itself. So the method, number one, the first step, once you've put all of those ingredients into your thermocycler, the first step is what we call denaturing. And this is where the temperature is increased to 95 degrees C, and that will then break the hydrogen bond between the two strands in your DNA double helix. So you then end up with two separate strands of DNA. So that's denaturing the DNA. Step two, you then drop the temperature down to 55 degrees C. And the reason for that is it allows any primers that happen to collide with the complementary sequence at the end of the DNA fragment that you're cloning. It allows them to align and it's now cool enough for hydrogen bonds to reform so that the primer is held in place. Step three is where we have the synthesis stage. And this is where the DNA polymerase 
can then attach any of these nucleotides, which then have aligned to their complementary base pairs. Um, they can attach and form that phosphodiester bond, so you now get a complete new DNA polymer. So after round one in the PCR machine, you now have two copies of the DNA fragment that you isolated that you wanted to copy. The key thing that you need to know about the PCR method is the different temperatures at each stage and what the general process or purpose of each stage is. So those are the bits that I've put in bold. So just to summarize some of those key points and link it to advantages, we said it's an automated machine that's far more efficient because you just put everything into the machine, turn it on and then you can leave it. And very, very rapidly, you can get hundreds of billions of copies of the DNA fragment that you isolated. So within a number of hours, you'd go from having a small number of copies to billions of copies, just leaving this machine running. And this could be for recombinant DNA technology, but it's also used in forensic science. If you only have a small sample of DNA from the crime scene, you could then use PCR so you have a larger sample, so you can then go on to do genetic fingerprinting analysis. Lastly, it doesn't require any living cells. It's just using nucleotides and enzymes. And the reason that's an advantage is it's quicker and it's much, much less complex a technique compared to in vivo cloning. So that is it for PCR. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.